Hello, I'm Mike Russell from MusicRadioCreative.com. I've recently had a question from Ray Ortega, who's on YouTube at youtube.com slash thepodcasterstudio. Great tutorials there on DSLR cameras, which I'm using to film this right now, and podcasting. Ray's asked me about the level meters inside Adobe Audition, and they are quite curious. So let's hop in and have a look and do a few experiments. So I've got a few new files here that I can record. First of all, I'm going to get my levels and just show you how to get a basic level on Adobe Audition's meters. Now, if I start recording, you'll see the meters starts flashing there. Um, now, what you can do to make it more visible is you can drag it around even while you're recording. I quite like it there because now it's really visible. And this is a good recording volume. You can see here it's just tickling between minus 3 and minus 1 dB. In fact, it's probably at the high end, as long as you're not shouting, and then it will go red like that. But the best thing is if I talk and then go quiet, the yellow bar stays for about one and a half seconds, so you can see where your peak is. Now, that's all well and good, and I can drop that back to where I like it, which is just down there, and stop recording. Now, if I zoom out and drop this into the multi-track, the first quirk about Adobe Audition and levels is that I can drop this in and you'll see the level there looks a little bit quieter. Now we'll get into that in just a moment. But the funny thing is I can turn the volume right the way up to plus 15 dB, which is, hang on, I might need to take my headphones off for this, pretty loud. Yeah. But when I mix it down, which I do there, you'll see it's terribly distorted, so uh, unlistenable. And if I play a little bit back, you'll see the meters starts. You can almost hear the distortion there. But the strange thing about Adobe Audition is it doesn't seem to digitally clip your audio when you actually do that in the multitrack. So if I hit normalize, which I've got on a hotkey, or you can find in the favorites menu here, normalize to minus 0.1 dB. And there you go, it's back to normal, and you'll see the meters starts flashing there. The distortion has completely disappeared. So it's interesting that you can go over zero dB in the multitrack and not distort if you choose to reduce the volume after you've mixed down. So a curious thing there, but the plot thickens. Now, let's go into this little file here that I've labeled tone. I'm gonna to go into effects, generate, and we've got tones here. And I'm simply gonna go in and generate a one kilohertz tone, which is really easy to do. There it is. Uh, you'll actually see that it'll start appearing in the preview box down there. I'm gonna make the amplitude minus three dB, so a little bit louder than it currently is. Zoom out, and there it is. You see it's a nice curvy uh, sine wave, which is lovely. Uh, once I've done that, it's a 10 second tone. Click OK, it's generated, there it is. Pretty bog standard kind of thing you hear on test transmissions and bits like that. So uh, minus three dB, and when I play it back, there it is at minus three dB. If you watch the level meter, I'll just show that for you one more time. Yep, no question about it, that is minus three dB, right? But then I'm gonna go into the multi-track, get rid of my talking there, and pop the tone onto track one. Now, watch the level meter down here, or in fact, I can drag it over there. When I play this tone back. Interesting, of course, I forgot to reduce the volume there. So let's put it on zero dB, okay? So technically, we should get minus three. But we don't, that's minus six. So what's going on there? Now, the plot really thickens when you go into the mixer and you look at the different levels here. So look at the levels on track one and the master track when I hit play, both at minus six dB. Now, if I go to the effects rack and I'm going to go to amplitude and compression and uh, I'll simply go for the amplify effect, okay? And then I'm going to pull that up by, well, let's type it in actually to make it more accurate, 3 dB, okay? So you'd expect to see an extra 3 dB on the level meters, which you do. Now that's at minus 3 dB, but get this, and I'm just gonna take my headphones off so I don't deafen myself with tone. Look at the input and output meters on the effects rack. The input you can see is going in at minus three dB and the output is coming out at zero dB. So curiously enough, every single level meter on Adobe Audition reads something different. Read into that what you will, but that's just a brief investigation into levels in Adobe Audition. I hope this has helped you to find your own level and remember for more tips and tricks, hit subscribe on this channel.